This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1574, Social Security, Planning for It or Not in Your Future, by Amanda of womenwhomoney.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is a show where I narrate posts from thought leaders in personal finance every single day of the year in 10 minutes or less. If you're someone who wants to keep good personal finance practices top of mind, but you don't have the time to read all the various blogs out there, then this show is for you. For now, let's get right to it and continue optimizing your life. Social Security, Planning for It or Not in Your Future by Amanda of womenwhomoney.com. No matter when you retire, you wanna know what role social security will play in your financial future. Will it go away? How much can you expect? When should you start benefits? When social security started in 1935, it was created to provide support for workers and their families who could no longer work due to age, disability, or death. It's comprised of the Old Age and Survivors Insurance Program for retired workers, their families, and survivors of deceased workers, and the Disability Insurance Program for Disabled Workers and Their Families. Today, it remains a primary source of income for many retirees and aging Americans, yet funding issues create some uncertainty about the future of these programs. In this article, we'll tackle these questions so you can determine the role Social Security might play in your financial future. Will Social Security go away? Social security is unlikely to change much in the foreseeable future, but eventually it will face challenges and look different than it does today. Concerns about social security's longevity stem from future funding concerns. For years, the programs operated with a surplus. The amount paid to workers and their families was less than it took in. With lower life expectancies and a smaller aging population, trust fund reserves grew for decades. Now, with lower birth rates, so fewer people paying in, and a growing aging population, more people receiving benefits, reserves in the trust funds are disappearing. That doesn't mean Social Security will go away, but future changes to the program are likely. Those changes will be up to Congress and may include higher taxes on payroll earnings to fund the program, reduction in monthly benefits, increased eligibility ages, means testing, and more. The future of social security and retirement planning. The Social Security Board of Trustees expects to be able to pay 100% of benefits through 2035. Around this time, the reserves run out and the program will rely solely on taxes for funding. Then the government could reduce benefits, increase taxes, or both. With changes on the horizon, you might worry about the future of benefits, but even younger folks can likely expect some form of benefits from Social Security. Still, the younger you are, the better the chance benefits will be different than they are today. This ambiguity might mean you exercise more caution with retirement planning. In The Simple Path to Wealth, author J.L. Collins advises saving for retirement on your own, pretending that Social Security won't exist. If and when you receive benefits, consider it a bonus. What you can expect, how to plan for social security in retirement. All that talk of uncertainty can be worrying, but it's best not to write off social security altogether. Depending on your age, social security could play a significant role in your retirement finances as you grow older. We'll help you determine what you can expect from social security to help you plan. How to find your social security estimate. When you pay Social Security payroll taxes, the money goes to current beneficiaries, and any extra money goes into the Social Security Trust Fund or reserves. In other words, the money you pay isn't in an account just for you. When you work and get paid, you collect credits towards your Social Security benefits. Credits determine if you're eligible for benefits, not how much you receive. You need 40 credits to qualify for benefits. If you have less, you don't qualify. The credits are cumulative, so even if you take a break from work, you will collect more credits if you go back to work. Your highest 35 years of earnings determine your estimated Social Security benefit amount, but the amount you get also depends on when you start collecting benefits. To find your benefits estimate, go to the Social Security site and create an account. Here you can check records and find out where you stand right now. How to decide when to start Social Security benefits. 
you have options on when to start monthly benefits. The benefit amount you receive each month increases as you age up until the age of 70 when you hit the maximum amount. And if you keep working beyond the full retirement age, your monthly benefit can continue to go up. Here are the ages for tiered social security benefits. Early retirement age. At age 62, you can start collecting a reduced benefit amount. Full retirement age. If you were born between 1943 and 1954, full retirement is age 66. If you were born after 1955, it's age 67. And delayed retirement age. Your benefit continues to rise until age 70 when it's capped. Things to consider when deciding whether to start benefits. Number one, can you afford to wait? The longer you wait to take benefits, the more you will get up to age 70. Number two, are you still working? You might delay starting your social security if you aren't to full retirement age and if you can afford it. Depending on your income, working might even boost your benefit amount. Number three, do you have a pension from a government or nonprofit organization? If you have a pension and didn't pay social security taxes, it might lower your available benefits. And number four, your spouse's benefit. Determine how one spouse's benefits can impact the other spouse's survivor benefits. Can you work and get social security? The short answer is yes, but if you take early retirement benefits and continue working, benefits get reduced if you earn over a specific amount. If you are full retirement age, income won't affect your benefits and benefits will be recalculated to include extra working years. But depending on your income, you might owe taxes on a percentage of your benefits. Are social security benefits taxed? Whether you pay taxes on social security benefits depends on your taxable income, but you never pay taxes on more than 85% of your benefits. Income levels for taxes on social security benefits. You will pay taxes up to 50% of your social security benefits if your income is between 25 and $34,000. For an individual, and $32,000 to $44,000 for a couple filing jointly. And you will pay taxes on up to 85% of your social security benefits if your income is over $34,000 for an individual or $44,000 for a couple filing jointly. Taxable income is your adjusted gross income plus your non-taxable interest income plus 50% of your social security benefits. Final thoughts on social security and how to plan for it in retirement. The future of social security is a bit hazy, but most of us will receive some income. Whether we'll face a reduction in benefits over time remains to be seen. Still, it's essential to know Congress will need to change the program and it's likely to impact benefits in the future. A prudent strategy is to save and invest without heavily relying on social security benefits in retirement but it's still crucial to know your estimated benefits and their tax implications. All of this information will help you when planning for your retirement income. You just listened to the post titled Social Security, Planning for It or Not in Your Future by Amanda of womenwhomoney.com. If you're a small business owner, this is for you. Running a business is just plain hard. Endless to-do lists, employees to take care of, and your ever-present bottom line. So first of all, kudos to you for staying on top of it. But I want to tell you about Gusto. Gusto built an easier and more affordable way to manage payroll, benefits, and more. They help over 100,000 businesses with tasks like automated payroll tax filing, simple direct deposits, free health insurance administration, 401ks, onboarding tools, you name it, Gusto made it easy. 94% of customers say Gusto streamlines payroll and benefits, and we agree here on the Optimal Living Daily team. We use Gusto for our payroll. Plus, they really care about the small business owners they work with. Their support team is attentive and helpful. Since money can be tight right now, you'll get three months free once you run your first payroll. Just go to gusto.com slash OFD and start setting up your business today. You'll see what I mean when I say easy. Again, that's three months of free payroll at gusto.com slash OFD. G-U-S-T-O dot com slash OFD. I learned a lot from this article because honestly, I don't know too much about social security. 
I'm with JL Collins in that I assume it just won't be available for me or that the benefit would be such a small amount that it's not worth thinking about. I'm pretty much a typical millennial in that regard. According to a recent Trans America survey, 80% of millennials worry that Social Security won't be around when we need it. And while none of us can know the future, I did see a few compelling arguments as to why some experts feel that Social Security will survive. While the trust fund is scheduled to be depleted by 2035, it's probable Congress will intervene as it did in 1977 and 1983 to strengthen Social Security's finances. That's because Social Security is an enormously popular program with bipartisan support and influential lobbies, including the almighty AARP. I also might be underestimating the value of Social Security to begin with. The Urban Institute estimates that millennials are projected to receive twice as much as the current benefit, about a million dollars for an average income single adult and two million for a couple. Some social security experts say that a worst case scenario would be to assume you'll get 70 to 80% of what your social security statement projects. And here's something I had no idea about. You should make sure your earnings are reported correctly to social security every two to three years. Your future social security check will be based on your 35 highest earning years, but they need to be reported accurately, which doesn't always happen. You can correct those errors, but it can be really difficult if you catch them decades from now. If your employer goes out of business before you can catch any errors, the needed documents may be unavailable. So I, for one, will be setting up an account on the Social Security Administration's website to review my earnings, and I hope you do too. And that should do it for today. Have a happy rest of your day, and I'll see you on the Friday show tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.